OP laughed hysterically at the faces of his biological parents after they told him that abandoning them was the hardest decision of their lives. Our family has an interesting story. My bio mother's side and my bio father's side have two marriages between the families. One of them is our biological parents, and one of them is between my biological mom's brother 55 and my biological dad's sister 54. My bio mom Linda and bio dad Chris actually met at my uncle's and aunt's engagement dinner when both of them were 16. Linda and Chris are still complete wrecks. My biological dad was the troubled one of the family, who would have problems with school or work. And my biological mom has had addiction issues since she was 14. When they met and started to have a relationship, both sides of the family tried to break them up. They even sent them to different countries, but they stole 50k us from their families, managed to come together, and ran away when they were 19. They got married in a third world country, and they had me 25 years old and my twin brother when they were 21 years old. They thought we were deadweights, so they left us in the hospital and went to another country. Luckily, they have checked into the hospital with their passports, so the hospital has reached the embassy. There, they found my grandparents, and they brought us back home. We have been raised by our uncle and aunt, since then we call them mom and dad. My parents were charged with child abandonment, but after 10 years of being Mia, the charges were dropped, and our families also didn't try to look for them. Two years ago, they showed up at my dad's parents' house with a completely renovated look. It turns out they have finished their education, had stable jobs in the country, and started to get mental health treatments. They were sober for nine years, and they have basically put themselves together. At first, they only saw their parents in public places before they were accepted into the houses. A year later, they met with us when we were 24. Me and my twin brother started to have a relationship with them, and we are somewhat cordial right now. Last week, our abandonment topic was opened, and Linda told us it was the hardest choice they had made. I started to laugh uncontrollably after that, and when they asked, I told them they had multiple choices to come back, and they didn't, and our families were right not to trust them. They would always have their eyes on them, and they should accept this at this stage. Linda started to cry, and they left shortly. All of the family except my brother think I am being too cruel, and I should apologize, but I think they had to hear the unfiltered truth. Ada. Verdict. Not the arsehole. Relevant comments. Men are lazy. And T.A. But it depends on what kind of relationship you want with them going forward. This will limit a relationship, but you may not care anyway. The rest of the family wants a restored relationship. OP. I wouldn't even trust a penny to either of them. So if they are not okay with it, they can leave. I honestly don't know what my family wants from them. Mila Silverleaf. NTA. They abandoned you in a foreign hospital. If they'd left you with your family, and then tried making something of they abandoned you in a foreign hospital. Abandoning you in a foreign hospital. It would be forgivable. I don't think what they did was. OP. It is a miracle that they checked in with their passports, and even though it was a third world country Sri Lanka, the doctors and nurses had compassion and tried to find out families, and the country actually had a good healthcare system, so it wasn't hard to find our family. Friedsch. But they could have at least sent a letter to your grandparents about your location about abandoning you. OP. I don't think they were in the right mindset to do that. We have reached the records in Sri Lanka. And it was clear that my father was high from God knows what and my mother was in a manic episode during that time. I am just glad that my mother has stopped drinking and using drugs during pregnancy, so we weren't born with fetal alcohol syndrome or other issues. Update. So, I made a post here like a month ago about my birth parents. I would like to thank each and every one of you who gave thought and time to comment on this post. Some stuff has happened since that post. First, my mom and dad are not allowed to contact me unless they want to go to jail. A good friend of mine from high school is a lawyer, and he advised me to prepare a cease and desist letter my main language is not English, but this is the closest thing that Google Translate said in the legal terms, and he did it for me without any charges because he said, that's what good friends do. My brother is sad that I am not even entertaining the idea of a relationship, but he says it is okay, and he understands it. He just sees them from a different perspective, the same perspective, that he sees the patients he is taking care of. My mother and father weren't happy about the restraining order and accused me of being cruel and heartless. They said I am the embodiment of a demon, and they said they would cut contact with me if I ever put this plan into action. I said, well, consider this our last talk then, and left their house I am residing in my own apartment that my grandparents gave me as a birthday present on my 18th birthday. So no worries, it is in my name and no one can touch it. We haven't spoken a word since, and I doubt this will change in the foreseeable future. My parents are too forgiving, and since childhood, 
I have been told I am being too vindictive. This still continues from their side. My parents say I remind them of my great-grandfather, who ruined people's lives just because they did small things wrong to him. I am not going to try to argue with that. My grandparents though, have understood my perspective, and they said they would respect my boundary. But they also asked me to respect their boundary to have a relationship. I said of course, and we had an agreement. I still love them so much, and I am lucky enough to have compassionate parental figures who can understand where I am coming from. Other extended family members have been divided into two groups. Most of them think I am cruel, and they don't want to have a relationship with me any more other than being civil around each other. And some of them still want to protect the relationship we have. I can live with this. I am also back in therapy. Thanks to my brother, he arranged a session with the therapist, and also an appointment with a psychiatrist in his hospital. So I am currently back in therapy, and have started to use antidepressants. It doesn't solve all the problems, but it helps. As for me, my life continues as my birth parents never showed up. I go to work and have some me time on the weekends. I spend some time with my friends whenever I can find the time, and I go visit my grandparents once every two weeks. They live next door to each other. My brother is my next door neighbor, so we eat most of the dinners together when he is not on the night shift. That night, I mostly found a guy to spend some time with. Relevant comments. Affectionate can 279. So, missing info. What happened that caused a cease and desist restraining order to be issued? OP due to the nature of the previous case, by our country's law, I can ask for a cease and desist letter. But that is not a restraining order. It is just a warning letter against them, saying if you ever come close to me, I will accept that as an assault, and I will act according to that. Vithika 96. Reading the first post, I wondered what the family would be like if the bio mom got into drugs at 14 and the bio dad had problems as a teenager too. I figured there was probably some toxicity in the first place, and after reading the rest of the family's reaction to OP, not wanting anything to do with the adults who literally abandoned them in another country without even trying to contact them back home, I feel firm in my stance that OP's family stinks. OP. My family comes from somewhat of a noble lineage in our country, and everything is about our looks and how we are perceived from the outside. So abandoning people who are outcasts is an option they are familiar with. So yes, they are toxic, and the concept of remittance man is a thing in our family. My dad and mom are not the innocent people here. Their parents, aka my grandparents, have pushed all the buttons to make it right, both medically and emotionally. But my biological dad is a diagnosed borderline, and my mother is type 1 bipolar, and had a really early diagnosis at age 13. I am also diagnosed with medication-resistant depression. I had TMS when I was 18 years old, so mental health disorders are genetically rampant in our family. My brother is also type 1 bipolar. Our grandparents tried to change a lot of stuff in our families, but their siblings wanted the same stuff to continue, so it didn't work. But they have raised me and my brother according to their ethical codes, so they are the ones we are looking up to. Unfortunately, our parents were heavily influenced by their aunts' and uncles'.